This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is good and worthy to be praised. And if the Lord has been good to you this week, why don't you stand with the praise team and bless the Lord in song. Let's pray. Our Lord, our God, we come to you with hearts of thanksgiving, hearts being grateful, for this is your day, and you've allowed us to live in it. We have come prepared with hands, minds, lips, and feet to praise you because you are worthy to be praised. And Lord, it's nothing that we have done so great that has allowed us this opportunity to come together. But God, but you and you alone have given us this day and we will make this day count. We Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. And we thank you for the word that's going to take course today that's going to penetrate the minds and hearts of men and women, boys and girls. So I pray that you would bless Bishop in a special way, that you would bless the service, Lord God, that you would have your way. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way today. I pray, Lord, for those that are at home that's tuning in virtually, that you would meet them there, Lord, because we know that you are a God that's present everywhere. And so we love you, Lord. We appreciate you. And for that, Lord God, we will give you our best praise today. In the mighty, precious, majestic, 
name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the church give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. The Lord is worthy. We did not get here alone, but God brought us here into the house of worship. And because of that, we want to say welcome to Christ's temple. We are a Christ Center Church connecting people to Jesus Christ and to one another, and we are glad to be in the house of the Lord once more. For those that are tuning in online via Facebook or uh, Zoom, we welcome you, um, and we hope that you have just as good of a time as we're going to have, because we're going to bless the Lord today. Amen. Amen. And now Bishop will come forward with our morning announcements. Thank you. Thank you. Again, good morning to all who are here this morning. We certainly praise God for your presence. We are blessed to be here in the name of the Lord. Remember that we are going to begin our children's church on next Sunday, and Sister Mary would like to meet with those who are going to be working with her to begin or start up again our children's church immediately after the morning worship service and i'll say in the library is good yes. in the in the library so if you would uh, uh, meet with her again we thank the lord for his goodness his grace his loving kindness toward us we are delighted to have a guest this morning evangelist gray who's a guest of uh, ernestina Good friend of Ernestina, we are delighted to have her, and we are grateful for all who are joining us this morning. I have another announcement that I need to make. Oh, the Board of Bishops will be meeting this week in Dallas, Texas. Please remember us in your prayers as we meet together Monday through Wednesday, and then also remember the Seals family. That funeral will be this coming Saturday at... Um, Pilgrim at 11 a.m. So please remember the Seals family and join them, members of that family, as they funeralize Sister Seals, a longtime member of the uh, Western Diocese. May God bless you. Amen. Would you stand and join with us in singing Glory, Glory, Hallelujah? The words will be. I'm sorry, perfect, perfect. It will be on the monitor.
perfect, perfect. What better way to describe the Lord our God? Perfect, perfect. Uh, This morning we'll be reading 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. I want to give a shout out to my queen if she's watching online. Judah uh, wasn't having it this morning, so <laughs> she's, uh, yeah, running the show. You got that right, Brother Hardy. Um, so Second Timothy, yes, ma'am. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. Amen. And it reads, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will become lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jabres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth, Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for theirs folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance. Persecutions, afflictions would happen to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. May God add a blessing to the hearer, reader, and doer of his holy word. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, you can remain standing if you like and uh, (laughs) help us to sing glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, 
glory, 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 glory. Since I laid my burdens down. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Amen, amen, amen. Again, we thank Frank for helping us out on the drums this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm sure that both I speak for Daniel and my and my wife and my uh, and myself that we were very thankful, grateful for the gifts that were given on uh, Pastor's Appreciation Sunday and during Clergy Appreciation Month. We thank the deacons, the members of the church, for your kindness, your thoughtfulness, and your generation generosity. And we are grateful, grateful indeed. Uh, please continue to remember our Sunday School Hour on Wednesday evening. The last uh, Wednesday evening during the Sunday School Hour, we had at least 30-some people online, which Amen. is, uh, we uh, give God the praise. Um, we're just so grateful. Had a brand new teacher uh, last uh, Wednesday evening, and uh, she did just a marvelous job, and we were, we were blessed. Bless, 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 bless. So it's always good to have that midweek tune-up, that midweek fellowship, that midweek uh, injection and source of encouragement. So if you'll join us online, we appreciate having that opportunity to gather around the word of the living God. And this morning, we're going to be talking about the word of our God. So let me invite you back to 2 Timothy and chapter 3 once more as we talk about the wonder of God's word, the wonder of the word. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, and I shall begin reading at verse 14. Yes, yes. And I'm going to read uh, through a few verses in chapter 4. Chapter 3, verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from a childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. The wonder of God's word. The wonder of the word. This has been a week of revelation. Whether it has come from the city council recordings that were leaked or whether it's come from the January 6th panel in the Congress, conversations that have been held in back rooms have been brought to light. And we have learned to our shock, maybe, and to our disappointment what some folks in the city council really think about black folks and some other folks. I don't know how that revelation struck you, but 
I was certainly disappointed by it. Uh, I think it hit some people like a punch in the gut. I was walking again down Crenshaw during the past week, and a gentleman who was just standing there, and I don't know him from Adam, but he immediately felt the, the necessity of engaging me in conversation. And I'm just kind of walking by, and he begins to talk about the pain and the disappointment of that. And he says, we just got to clean house downtown. We just got to clean house. And we have been also disturbed by what has come forth out of the January 6th panel. And as they have seen that that effort for the overthrow or the uh, refusal to acknowledge Biden's election was a well-orchestrated, well-coordinated plan. Both of these are revelations. They come out and expose circumstances and situations that take us by surprise. Well, <clears throat> and, and particularly the revelation of downtown with the city councilman, kind of, it reminds me of the verse in the Bible that says that out of the heart, the mouth speaks. We Oftentimes, we say that, you know, you, you don't know about a person, but if you listen to them long enough, you will know about them. Because out of the heart, what's in the heart is going to come forth. The words of our lips, our speech, our conversation, it reveals our heart. Well, praise be to God, we have something that reveals the heart of God. We have a divine revelation. And that's what I really want to focus on, uh, a divine revelation. That is the word of our God. The stuff that we've heard this week will knock you down, upset you, disturb you. But the word of our God is a word that will pick you up, encourage you, and strengthen you. It is indeed an incredible revelation because it comes from the God of heaven and earth. We know that when it comes to politicians, whether they're in Los Angeles or Washington, D.C., you had better be careful of how much you believe. Amen? Um, you shouldn't swallow everything they say hook, line, and sinker. But when it comes to God's word, you can swallow it all hook, line and sinker. Not only is it all true, but it is all good. This book, this book, there is no other book like this book, like the Holy Scriptures. When you begin to think about how that this book was written over a span of 1,500 years by 40 different authors, that all with different personalities. In this book, we have history, we have poetry, we have prophecy. In Ecclesiastes, we have philosophy. But the book has one major theme, and that is the theme of salvation. Yes. This book has one hero, and that hero is our Lord Jesus. This book has but one purpose, and that is to glorify our God and reveal to us and make him known. It's a divine revelation that comes from the mind and the heart of our God. And let me just say to us very, at the very outset, there are some times when we gather around this book, it makes us wave our hands and shout, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. But there are some other times when we gather at the book that it makes us say, ouch, because it pinches us and it touches us where we had not expect to be touched. It opens our eyes to things that we did not realize that are true about ourselves. It enlightens us concerning our world. This is the word of God. And this word is a word that you not only need to read on a daily basis, if you possibly can, you should, 
Uh, I have been told by those who study these kind of things that if you just read four days a week, hopefully you'll pray every day. Amen. But, and the little song said, what, pray every day and read your Bible every day. But if you would just, just read the word of God four times a week, spend some time face to face with God, and, and you get face to face with God when you read his word, it will change your life. The reading of the word of God will change your life. You need to expose yourself to God's word. I have been reading the word of God and I, at, at least for 50 years. I will soon have pastored that long. And I have been reading the word of God and reading the word of God. And do you know it's more precious today than it was in the beginning. I have found the word of God when I started out. It was difficult to develop that discipline in my life. And it's a discipline that you get into the word every day. Now, hopefully you will see it as a discipline, something that you feel you must do to sustain yourself spiritually and not a chore that you must do. You know, some people look at the reading of God's word, oh, I gotta go read the word, you know, and, and uh, I gotta make the checkpoints so I can get the brownie points from God. But no, the word of God is designed to bring joy and rejoicing to your heart. And that's why we should want to read it, and not only read it, but we want to study it and meditate on it and memorize it and hide it in our hearts so that we will not sin against the Lord our God. And even though I've been reading it all of these many years, there were things that when I started out reading, it made no sense to me. I didn't, I wasn't able to connect the dots. But I find that as I continue to read, I can, I, I'm able to connect the dots. It's making more sense than it's ever made. And I believe because God, through his spirit, is enlightening and enlarging my heart and increasing my capacity for the things of our God. Those of us who have been around for a moment, we might remember back in the 60s, there was a spokeswoman, Anita Bryant, advertising orange juice, who used to say, a day without orange juice is like a day without sunshine. Well, I don't know about all of that. It sounds pretty nifty and something that you'd use to advertise something. But I do know that a day without the scriptures. I do know and I can say that a, a day without the word is really a day without sunshine. Because whenever I get into the word of God, his word shines into my heart, shines into my life, and makes all the difference in the world. I, I want to help us all out this morning. Paul, seasoned mentor to Timothy, his young son in the ministry, and Timothy is cutting his teeth in ministry, and he's run into some difficulties with the church at Ephesus. Now, isn't that interesting? You know, sometimes we think about the church and we say, oh, the church of the day, it's got problems. No, church has always had problems. Church is all, thank you, Brother Hardy. As long as they got folk in there look like me and you, people, it's got problems. It's got problems. As long as there are people, there going to be some problems. And so Timothy was having a tough go of it there in Ephesus, and, and, and Paul is concerned about his son hanging in there, and he says to his son that you must continue in the things which you have learned, and those things which you have been persuaded of, and you know that they are true. I am sometimes quite amazed that people who have been exposed to the word, who have sat underneath the word, who will go off and then join some cult with some off-the-wall ideas, and they will make themselves a part of it and many times become quite devoted. But Paul says to Timothy, 
who perhaps is doing a little wavering. He says, continue in those things that you know that are true. And not only do you know that they are true, but you know those folk who taught them to you. you have, they have a track record with you. This is not a Jim Jones moment, but this is someone with whom you have observed, you have watched their life, you know the integrity and the authenticity of their life, and when they have lived before you, hold on to those truths. We all have seen people start out well and seemingly very sincere in their faith. But somehow they get discouraged, so they get distracted, and they fall away from the faith to the damnation of their own soul. Paul is warning Timothy, that's going to happen. It has happened. It will happen again. It, there's nothing new under the sun. But Timothy, I expect something else from you. You hold on to the word, Timothy. Hold on to the word. You know from whence it has come. Hold on to it. Stand on it. You have seen the reality of their lives. And again, I go back to something I said a few Sundays ago. You have borne witness of the word of God from your childhood. Mother taught you the word. Grandmother poured into your the word. So often we think of children and we say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to let them make up their mind. You don't let them make up their mind about whether or not they're going to brush their teeth or whether or not they're going to go to school. You, you, know, you say, uh, I wish I had told my daddy, you know, <laughs> what to, I, would, I, I probably wouldn't be here today. But children, are, when they're young, hearts are tender and they soak up things like a sponge. And unfortunately, they soak up the bad as well as the good. And but Paul says, Timothy, from a child, from a child, you have been exposed to the teaching of the Word of God. And we need to even take more seriously that responsibility to pour into our children. Uh, the word of God so that they have a spiritual foundation. There are so many voices speaking in our world. Uh, yesterday when I walked down the street and walked a little bit of the taste of Chicago, taste of Chicago, Lord have mercy. What do you call it out here? I'm, I'm still in Chicago. Taste of soul in Los Angeles. Y'all brought the idea from Chicago, so. Anyway, anyway, but I walked down the street and I just looked around and I said, there are so many voices, so many ideas, so many various uh, philosophies that are floating in the air, that are being pushed and being projected, and they all have about 15 minutes of fame, and you know, and then they've gone on their way and people are off into something else or something different. You need a foundation. Because if you don't have a foundation, the word says you will be blown about by every wind of doctrine. Everything that comes along, you will find yourself vulnerable and open and susceptible to being led astray because you don't have a good foundation. The scriptures, Paul says to Timothy, he says, they make you wise unto salvation. If you want to know the way of salvation, if you want to know how to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, it comes through the scriptures. God reveals himself. God makes himself known through the scriptures. And therefore, we must be a people of the book. The word of God reveals the way of God. 
The word of God is what reveals to me that I am a sinner and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And because I cannot meet the mark that God has established, I need a Savior. And Christ is the Savior. He's the Savior and he is the Deliverer and he has died for the sins of the whole world. And therefore, because the scriptures make us wise unto salvation, make us wise, and they give us knowledge, insight, and understanding about the way that leads to salvation. He says, all scripture, all scripture, every bit of the book, Every jot, or at every jot, every tittle from Genesis to Revelation, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And I need you to understand this morning that all scripture is not, it's not the thoughts or the opinions of men because 40 men, remember there are 40 different authors, you can't get 40 people in the world to agree on nothing. But here these 40 men come together and they agree on this one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. God uses these various men. He uses their personalities. He does not necessarily, when you think about the scriptures being given, it's not a matter that they were they, they dictated it to them as it were, but as they were writing what was written, they were inspired, they were moved by the Spirit of God. That's the supernatural element, how God superintended, God guided, God directed the, re, the writing of Scripture so that we would have a book that would reveal to us the wisdom of our God. All Scripture, the Scriptures are God-breathed. The Scriptures are not like a movie script where somebody gets an idea and sits down and with the creativity of his, of his own mind, he comes up with a plot, he comes up with a theme, and he sits down and he writes it and, 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 and becomes a novel or becomes a movie. The Scripture is God-breathed. This is a book that has the word that contains that is the word of our God. And here's what he says. Heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of our God will stand forever. When the world is on fire, the word of our God will stand forever. And this is the reason that we need to be standing on the word because the word is going to endure forever and ever. Amen. This word, he says, this word is good for uh, doctrine, those core fundamental uh, uh, teachings in the Bible, the incarnation, the fact that God in Christ became, was, was Christ, was man in the flesh. You need to understand that the word is good for doctrine. The word is good for reproof and correction. Where I am uh, out of line with the will of God, out of line with the word of God, the word is designed to open my eyes and show me the path. Um, I can remember very, uh, quite vividly, uh, even being in the pulpit as a younger person, and um, the, the preacher was preaching, and uh, he was stepping all over my toes, and I, and he, I was just wondering. I said, "My goodness, he gonna call my name next?" But that's what the Word of God is designed to do. The Word of God is designed to give us correction and instruction in righteousness. If I want to do the right thing, I've got to study the book. I've got to learn the book because the book will tell me when I'm on the right path, when my attitude, my behavior is off, then I need to have the book correct me. I need to have the book speak into my life. The word gives instruction in righteousness. What I ought to do, how I ought to live. The word of God tells me that as a husband, how I am to treat my wife, loving her as Christ loved the church. 
How that wives are to be obedient to their husbands in the Lord. How that children are to be not harassed and not hounded, but they are to be carefully nurtured and tended to, not provoked to that. The book will speak to every area of our life. It will speak to my finances. I am to honor the Lord with my finances. I am to honor the Lord. What am I to do with my body? I am to honor the Lord with my body because my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I got to be careful how I take care of my body because it's not mine, but it is the temple of God's Holy Spirit. The Word of God just speaks to uh, those questions, those, those uh, big questions that we have and gives us insight and instruction as to how we are to live our lives. There are times that we just don't know. And, and, and we wonder, what, what do I do here at this juncture? And it's amazing how that you can look into the book and God will say, this is what you, this is where you need to forgive. This is where you need to forget. This is where you, you need to persevere. Uh, this is where you need to suffer. Because God uses our, his suffering in our lives to make us more like himself. To trust him more. Oh, how much we learn when we pass through the valley of suffering. I don't welcome it. You don't welcome it. But it's amazing what you'll learn about God, the God who never fails. You'll never be the husband, the wife, the friend, the employee. What kind of employee? You know, some people, their whole life is, they work on a job, and it's all about being slick, getting over. But, but the Bible says, whatsoever you do, whatsoever you do, you ought to do it as unto the Lord. When, 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 when you shirk and when you cheat and when you steal and when you uh, don't give an honest day's work for an honest day's pay or whatever you might be tempted to do, the Lord's name is at stake. The honor and the reputation of the Lord because what are people going to do? They're going to judge every Christian by what they see you do. They're not going to say, well, he's an exception. They're going to say, ain't none of them real. None of them. They're all phony. They're all phony. Every last one of them. Just phony. Phony as they can be. Thank you, ma'am. Hypocrites is even a better term. That's right. And that's what the world wants to catch us in. Some hypocrisy. Uh, some place where there is duplicity in our life so that they can discount. But it ought to be. I don't know that it is. But it ought to be that if an employee needed some employees, the employer needed some employees, they ought to call and say, you got any believers down there, anybody following Christ? Send them because I know what they will be. I know how they will conduct themselves. I know that I can trust them. I know they're not going to steal. It's in the book. It's all in the book. How we ought to serve one another. We've got believers who don't want to have anything to do with people much. And especially outside, I, I see you at church. That's all I want to see you. <laughs> but that, that's, that's not Bible. That might be, you know, the American way, the American way. And some of us were taught that, you know, you stay out of my business, I stay out of your business. But we are to be brothers and sisters. And I, let me tell you something about family. Everybody in your family, you don't like the same way. Make, make this a little personal. You got some family members that you prefer over other family members. But because they are family, you still will rally to their side if there's a need because they are family. They, they, you know, what, they, what do we like to say? You know, Rem, blood's thicker than water. Blood's thicker than water. Yes, and I've learned that, that blood is thicker than, than water. But in the body of Christ, you would not choose everybody in this body of Christ to be your brother or your sister. But we have special responsibilities to those who are members of the household of faith. 
We have a responsibility to love one another. We have a responsibility as much as life in us to serve one another. There are over a hundred one another's in the New Testament. Why? Because God never intended for you to be out there alone. He didn't intend for you to walk alone, but he intended for us to be intertwined so that we encourage and build up one another. Now, where do you get that from? Because there are times that I don't want to be bothered with you either. But the word says, I'm, I, I'm to live my life underneath the word. And the word is the one says to me that this is the way that I have. And you find this in the book. Paul charges Timothy, he says to young Timothy, he says, remember, Timothy, there's going to be a day of accountability. And you are going to stand before God. And you've got to give an account. He's, re he's reminding Timothy that the handling, the teaching, the preaching, the, the word of God, this is serious business. And because it's serious business, and all will ultimately stand before God. Timothy, remember, at the end, it's you and the Lord. You're going to stand before Almighty God who judges and who knows the secrets of all hearts. You see, God knows your capacity. God knows my capacity. And as Sister Grace said, you can't hide nothing. Amen? We can hide it from one another many times, but we can't hide nothing from the living God. Preach the word that the men of God, the women of God may be complete, mature, thoroughly equipped. If you want to be uh, equipped, if you want to have what you need to do what God's called you to do, it's from the word of our God. Preach the word. Be ready in season when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. In season, out of season. Convince, rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. There is um, in this word, we have a responsibility to keep on sharing because there's power in the word of God. There is a, a power by the Holy Spirit that will convict us, that will convince us. There is power in the word of God and we can exhort one another through the word of God and we receive encouragement. We are to do it all with all long suffering and gentleness. We're to do it in a way where we come as servants of one another to strengthen, to build up, and to encourage each other. He says, because the time will come. And we are living in that time. We are living in that time when people will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desire. It's, it sometimes amazes me what some churches are debating. Should we ordain homosexuals? Should we uh, have marriages between two men or two women? I, I, the word's spoken already. The word, the word is already, I don't, I don't know why we need to, I don't know why we need today, but he says, for the time will come when men and women will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own lust, their own desires, they have uh, itching, they want to be, hear certain things, uh, e even the whole movement of, of, of self-esteem, you, you, you kind of have, have to be careful with that, you, where you, you're not all about building up yourself. Because in the Word, we are told to humble ourselves. And the reason we're told to humble ourselves is because most of us, most of us, there are, there are some exceptions here, but mo most of us are, the, the issue is pride. That, that's the issue most, for most folk is the issue is pride. You know, don't let me get, uh, you know, 10 cents in the bank and, and move from my Chevy to a Buick and uh, move out of um, Watts into Compton and, you know, and we, we just get, we get beside ourselves. 
And so that, that the Bible, that the problem is most, the most folk is, is pride. We, we feel uh, about ourselves more than we ought to feel. We, <sighs> as though we got there by ourselves. Not by the grace of God. But whatever doors have been opened, whatever ways have been made, we do not realize at times that it is by the grace and the mercies of our God. In the last days, be careful of the humanistic ideas. And, and, and we have uh, such a mixture nowadays. You know, you get a little self-esteem, a little humanism, Buddhism, Hinduism, vegetarianism. Not that you want to be a vegetarian. Please don't go out and say I said that. But you get, you know, people just mix all this stuff up together. And, and next thing you know, you're kind of out in left field. You, you can be, you got to be on guard. You got to make sure you're checking in with the book. He says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will keep to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned unto fables. But you, Timothy, be watchful. Be on guard. Be alert. Be careful. Don't, allow, don't swallow every new idea that comes down the pipe. But check it out. See if it squares with the book. Be watchful in all things. And then, Timothy, you need to be reminded that you are going to uh, have to endure afflictions. There are going to be some hard times. There are going to be some difficult days. Be watchful in all things. Uh, another translation is translated that keep your head. Keep, 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 keep your head. Keep, be, be alert. Be, be on guard. Do the work of an evangelist. Be one who's a, a soul winner and sharing the faith and doing what you can to bring others into the kingdom of God. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. The word of our God. Sometimes I need this word to comfort me and remind me of the faithfulness of my God. I, I need the word to do that. But there's some other times that I need the word to say to me, watch out. Be careful. I need the word to remind me that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I, I need God to bless me and make me shout and glory, hallelujah, my soul is sanctified. I need the word to make me uh, rejoice in the God of my salvation, reminding me about my God that he went with Daniel and the lion's den. I need the word to do that. But I need that same word to remind me that judgment will begin at the house of God and that everyone who is a fornicator, everyone who is an immoral person, the judgment of God will come their way. Amen. I need to be reminded Amen. because I can get careless. I can get complacent. I can get lazy. <laughs> well, it's good to know I'm not by myself. <laughs> the word of God, it will save us from our sins. The word of God will sanctify us so that we grow up and mature in Christ's likeness. It will heal us when we're hurting. And then the word of God, as Mother, old Mother Hughes used to say, it's sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. I'm so glad for God's word. I just thank, I thank God for his word. A lamp to my feet. And a light to my pathway is the word of our God. Oh, the word. Oh, the word. Jeremiah said once more, he said, I, it's the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. I'd like to tell young people when I see them lined up at the marijuana cannabis shop, you, you need, this is, this will bring you more joy. It won't charge, don't charge you. Just, you, don't, you don't need that. This, 
This will do something. This will do something for you. Keep your, you can keep, keep your money in your pocket and the word in your soul. Oh my God, have mercy, have mercy. Paul says to Timothy as I close, keep on believing what you have heard and what has been taught and what you have seen live before you. And we are to keep on sharing the faith because God uses the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And then we are to keep on living for Christ. We've got to stick with this revelation, the word of our God. Try it. See what God will do. I was quite surprised to see on Wednesday night, Jackie, did I hear you say this? Jackie said she'd been studying that lesson. And was reading that lesson said, did you say something about it? It'd make you want to holler. <laughs> but did you, you said something along that line about you got some insight there. And I, 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 that's what I thought I heard. <laughs> well, it may not be true for you, but it's true for me. Hallelujah. There are some times the word makes me want to holler. Yes, God opens my eyes, and I realize that he's a good God. And he's a loving God. And there's none like him. And I want everybody to know it. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation this morning. If you're here today and the Holy Spirit of God has spoken to your heart. And perhaps in your life you need to be consistent with your going to God's word on a regular basis. We'd love to pray with you this morning. Let's all stand together, please. Let's all stand. And as we uh, sing our hymn of invitation, uh, number 433, I think, uh, I believe it, I will trust him. You're here this morning and perhaps the Lord is saying you ought to be connected to this church. We want you to know that now is the time if you would like to be connected, like to be uh, part of the Christ Temple family officially. We praise God and you are welcome. If there's some other need in your life that you just want prayer for, we encourage you to come this morning. The altar is open and we're singing this hymn, Mother Church, number 433, which speaks about the Word of God. Well, we sing together. I believe it. Yes, I'll trust him. I will trust my risen Lord. I will rest up on the promise of his word. I will have them to for his death has set me free. Never more, our child of darkness, will I be. Jesus, my Lord, no more suffer for me. For my sins, now I am free. Jesus, my Lord, no suffer for me. Die for my sins, now I am Do you believe that we're singing stanza two? I believe it, yes, I'll trust him as the unit did of old. I'm with Father in his footsteps day by day. He did face will supply me in the 
has one more stanza. If you're going to come, please come. We're going to sing the last stanza and then pray. And Sister Carlotta, if you would help me pick it up just a little bit. I realize I pick it up and then drop it, so help me a little bit. Okay. Thank you. I believe it. I will trust him and confess my Savior now. For my sins and can the Father all have laid. And my heart in true repentance, I fell from a grace that fell, trusting in the My Lord, my Lord, suffered for me, died for my sins, my sins, now I am free. Jesus, my Lord, suffered for me, died for my sins. Father, we do thank you this morning for your word, which is able to make us wise unto salvation. Help us as the people of God to treasure the word. May we hide it in our hearts. May we meditate on it day and night. May we allow it to clean our lives so that we are more and more like you. Bless now each one who's come to the altar today. You know the concern of their heart. You know the desire of their life. And so we pray that you would work in them, Lord, both to will and to do of your good pleasure, Lord. Have your way in their lives. Sanctify them. Use them. Bless them at home. Bless them on their jobs. Bless them as neighbors, Father. Help us to live out the truth of your word so that men might see our good works and give glory glory unto the Lord our God. Have your way now. Save us and purify us and sanctify us in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, amen and amen. Amen. might remain uh, standing. Those who are guests today, again, we want to say thank you for your presence this morning. We are so grateful that we have been blessed by your, your being here. And good to see uh, Frank. It's good to see you again this morning. And uh, both Franks. we got two Franks there together, right? We thank you. Thank you for uh, your presence. And Evangelist Greg, we thank you for your presence. And any others who, Ernest, good to see you this morning. We thank you for being with us today. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of his spirit be with us all both now and forever. And God's people said, amen and amen.